And our theme, we're going to be doing beach pour. So we're going to be doing a lot of fun techniques. We're going to show you a couple different ways to achieve um, beautiful beach pours. So this is one example. Um, we are going to be using our folk art pouring medium. So that is a really important part of this project. We're going to be using our folk art paint. Um, and we're going to be using a hair dryer, um, just a everyday hair dryer. And this actually has like the attachment on it for um, like volume or diffusing. So that's important to help blow your paint around. So um, I want to say hi to everybody. Thanks for joining us. Michaels, thanks for having us. Um, we've been able to do a series of paint pouring over the past couple weeks. So if you are just joining us for the first time, welcome. Um, if you have watched the other ones, we're so glad you're back and taking the time to relax and pour. This really is a you know, truly fun thing that is a stress reliever. Um, and it's all about the experience and you really can't do paint pouring wrong, which is so great. Um, you can really just experiment. So this is a great time to do that also. Um, Jesse is going to be answering comments and questions. We can answer them live. So please ask away either in the chat um, and she can go ahead and relay, to me, relay those to me and I can answer them for you. And then she's also going to tell us all about our giveaway that we're doing. So, Jesse, you want to say hi to everybody and yeah. let them know? Yeah. Hey, guys. This is Jesse. Um, like Kira said, I'm going to be reading your questions to Kira, so please make sure you put them in the comments. But also, at the end of this um, video, we are going to be picking a random person from the comments to win $50 worth of plaid products so you can make all of these projects that Kira is doing today. So make sure you're commenting and saying hello, letting us know where you're from, asking your questions, because you'll be entered in to win that $50 prize pack. So again, welcome everybody. If you're just getting in and getting settled, we are going to do be doing paint pouring with folk art pouring medium. And we are doing beach themes today. So we're going to do some fun techniques. I'm going to walk you through some um, like pouring 101. If you've never done pouring and you're a beginner, if not, um, hopefully you'll get some great tips and tricks out of this. Again, we've been doing this. So our past classes are on michaels.com and if you also want to go back and watch this after, they're going to post the video for you so you can check this out. So say you don't have your supplies right now, but you can go ahead and just watch along, get inspired, and then you can go back and watch after the class. So again, like I said, we're using folk art pouring medium, and we actually have two um, products on michaels.com and in the store. We have our folk art paint pouring that is pre-mixed. So this already has the paint and the pouring medium mixed in the bottle. So you can use it directly out of the bottle. So that's a really easy way to do it. It comes in a variety of colors. There's metallics, black and white. So you can use this, but we're gonna be focusing on our folk art pouring medium. So what is so great about this is that you can take any of our acrylic paints and mix it with the pouring medium and personalize your pour. So you can create any color you want. You can use specialty metallics, glitters, color shift, treasure gold, so this is so great that you can make your own color palette. And that's how we're gonna do our beach today. We've got some beautiful blues and warm colors for the sunset. And the pouring medium, this is really important when you do your pour. If you just use regular acrylic paint, um, it's gonna get muddy. So you're gonna pour it onto your canvas or do a dirty pour we're gonna talk about. And the paint is all gonna mesh together and you're just gonna get this big brown blob no matter what. And even when you pour, if it looks okay, once it dries and settles, it's gonna all get muddled and not look great. So the pouring medium actually allows the paint to not mix together and it's gonna actually swirl and you're gonna be able to marble with it. And it also allows the paint to glide all over your canvas. So when you're tilting and twirling, you'll see the movement that it gives the paint. So Again, this is folk art pouring medium, and you can use this with any of our folk art paints, any of your acrylic paints. Um, so, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and I'll show you when we get started how we mix and pour. Um, something else that we use a lot in pouring is we use just these really expensive, inexpensive disposable baking pans or trays. Like these are a really great thing to pour in if your canvas is small. Um, we also are going to use plastic spoons, plastic cups, Popsicle sticks also a great, great way to stir. And thumbtacks. So we actually use these. I'm gonna show you to hold your canvas off of your surface. And your surface, you really wanna make sure that it's covered well because this is gonna get messy. Um, a lot of people wear gloves. Those are harder to get right now. This paint and the pouring medium is non-toxic. So I'm just gonna use my bare hands. You wash it off with soap and water. Um, and I also always have baby wipes with me, especially during filming. It makes it really easy to keep your hands clean. 
So um, I'm gonna get started. We're gonna do the simple beach first. And then again, we're gonna use a hairdryer um, in another pour. And I'm gonna show you how to move the paint around with that. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Yeah, um, everybody's just kind of saying hello. They're saying thanks so much. They watched our other class the other night, the cactus painting. Um, awesome. Everybody's getting excited. They're saying hair dryer this time. Very cool. Everybody's excited to see what you do today, Kira. Good, good. I hope we have some repeats and people are pouring along with us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, again, I we pre-mixed some of our paints already just to save time so you can see here. But I'm just gonna use a plastic cup and I'm gonna go ahead and mix our navy. So this is just regular acrylic paint. You can use a multi-surface, enamel, outdoor, specialty. And the great thing about the pouring medium also is that it comes out of the bottle milky, but once you mix it with your acrylic paint, you don't have to worry about changing the color of your paint. It's gonna stay true to the color. So this navy is gonna look just like this once you fully mix your pouring medium. So I'm gonna pour this in here and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And I'm gonna mix up a bunch. So I'm gonna probably, you know, empty this bottle into this cup here. You guys can see that. I've got some bigger and some small cups. And you know, these cups, you can wash them out since it just cleans up with soap and water if you wanted to save them or you can just peel your paint out when you're done since they're plastic. So I'm using Navy on that. And then I'm just gonna use our Folk Art pouring medium. And you wanna do about a one-to-one -one ratio. I will show you guys kind of the consistency. So you want to mix really well. You want to make sure there's no lumps or bumps in that. And you can see it looks milky, like it's making the paint light. But once you start, it starts to get dark. I'm really short, so I can't see over the cup here. Stand on my tippy toes. So you want to stir. And you can see the consistency. It's like a syrup. And you want to make sure that it's not lumpy at all. So the folk art paint is really thick when it comes out of the bottle. And so this pouring medium thins it down and it allows you to be able to swirl and get movement out of your paint. So Kira, we have a couple questions. Um, people are saying some people don't have the pouring medium right now. So is there a substitute or um, is, there, is pouring medium really the best thing to use? You really wanna use pouring medium. Um, like I said, if you just use paint, it's gonna all mesh together and create just a blob of color it's gonna mix. So really the pouring medium is super important for this. But again, you can watch, just get inspired, learn today ask questions and then get your pouring medium on michaels.com or in the store. I know a lot of stores are still doing curbside, which is great. And then you can watch this video again for a refresher after on michaels.com. So you guys can see the consistency. It's almost like a syrup. So that, and again, as you, you know, mix your paint and you do this, you really get to feel like what's too thick, what's too thin, and you can always go back in and add more paint or add more pouring medium depending on the consistency. If you're like, that's a little thick, you can just, you know, add either way. So that's what you're gonna get. So I've got all my colors here. Oh, and this one we're also, whoops, we're also gonna use a drinking straw to blow some of our paint across our canvas. So. This gives you a little bit more control than a big hair dryer if you're doing a smaller canvas. So I'm gonna take my canvas and I am going, and again, I protected my um, workspace. I just have some um, poster board, which makes it easy when we're on video to move everything around. I'm just gonna fold this in half. Right, so I'm gonna use thumbtacks and I know a lot of people will set their canvas on cups but I like the thumbtacks because it just makes it easier to move around um, after you're done it keeps it stable and also when you flip it over if you're doing um, a dirty pour you can get your arm out under the canvas um, makes it easier than if it's just flat on your surface um, like I said baking sheets are great to pour on silicone mats if you have those like a, even like a silicone baking mat that you dedicate to your crafting that's a great thing because your paint can just pull right off of that. Um, you can use um, parchment paper is also a great nonstick surface to pour on. I know some people even use garbage bags they just line their whole table because it is going to get messy. So I have my canvas on my thumbtacks stuck right in there. I'm going to actually go horizontal. 
So for this pour, we've done, this is the sunset, and then this is the beach wave, the ocean. So we're going to take our, we're using um, baby pink. So again, I've pre-mixed this. So this is a one-to-one -one ratio. So this is our folk art baby pink. And then we added our folk art pouring medium and I just give it a quick stir since it's been sitting for a little bit. So go ahead and mix or pour this into a cup. So I'm going to do a dirty pour. So a dirty pour means when you mix your paints in a cup and you layer them together and then you add them to your canvas. So a direct canvas, I would just take the paint and we're gonna do that in a little bit. And I would just pour directly in whatever pattern or design I was doing. But for this, we're gonna actually take a, a second cup or third cup and we're going to add our two colors to it and get a layer to pour onto our canvas. Hey Kira, can you show us the push pins again? The placement? Yeah. Yep, so these are just, um, you know, everyday inexpensive push pins. And these ones, this has actually glue stuck to it already. Um, these are just flat. You don't want to have round ones because you want these to create legs on your canvas. And I just put them in the four corners of our canvas. And what's great with the push pins that it keeps it elevated off your surface. So it actually allows the paint to run off. And it's just easier that you're not digging up under your canvas when it's wet or you need to pull your arm out if you're doing a, you know, a pour where you turn your canvas upside down. Um, it's just a great little trick for your canvas. And again, you could do this right in a baking pan if you're doing a smaller canvas. Um, and then it makes it easy also when you're done to move it. So it's not slipping and sliding around. Okay, so I have got our pink. I am going to mix some of our linen. And don't worry, because you use the pouring medium, even though you can't, you guys can see that, it doesn't look like much or you're like, oh, it's all gonna be pink. It's gonna, the pouring medium's gonna keep the paint from completely mixing together and it's gonna be separate when you pour it out of your cup. Hey Kira, if you yep. don't have these exact colors, can you substitute other colors? Absolutely, yes. So anything goes, um, <laughs> right now you can absolutely. So we're using a light pink, like a creamy off-white color, a yellow, an orange, a navy, and white. So you could actually, use any color similar to that. You could bring in your aquas, your greens, your teals. You know, you could have even a more blue sky, gray sky. So you could absolutely do any of these colors. And, you know, we talk about um, in our pouring kind of 101 we did, we talked about color palettes. So, you know, typically we like to keep like warm colors together and then cool colors together if we're doing a dirty pour. Um, especially just because even though they don't mix, you just get a really clean, beautiful pour. Um, and we don't like to use more than, we keep it about four to six colors per pour, um, which is what we recommend. And you just get more control over your pattern also. And especially when you're swirling, swirling and marbling, you can really see all those colors if you limit it a little bit. Yeah. So two things, sorry, Kira. Uh, Michelle said she is going to add purple to her sunset, which I think is a great idea. I love that. You could add purple, magenta, fuchsia, any of those would be beautiful. Totally. And then also, can you show the consistency just one more time before you start pouring? Yeah, absolutely. So here's the navy. I have a spoon in this one. And again, you can use a plastic spoon or a craft stick, a popsicle stick, anything like that, you know, works great to stir. So this is your consistency. Can you guys see that? So you want it to really be like a syrup. So it's really thick and creamy. You can't do that when it comes up to the bottle, but that pouring medium, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And like I said, if you're like, this is a little bit thick, you know, and again, practice a little bit. You'll, you'll get the feel of it, what it should feel like because it's consistency. Um, you can add additional paint or you can add some pouring medium back into it just to get it right. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, ask questions. I love to hear from you guys. Yeah, yeah. We're just, I'm just answering some questions in the chat about where the video is going to be located afterwards and all, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Looking good so far. Yeah, I've added my linen and my uh, baby pink, and I'm doing a dirty pour. So that means I've combined more than one color in a cup by layers, and now I'm going to pour onto the canvas. So also you can see on this, we don't want to do exactly half, right? We want it to be about three fourths and then the bottom is going to be our ocean. So we're just going to kind of eyeball that when we pour. 
So I'm going to pour, and I'm going to actually think here. I'm going to pour away from you guys and then flip it. So I'm going to pour right onto the canvas. And every pour is going to be different, right? So it depends how much pink, how much you swirl. You could always go back in. You're like, oh, that's not enough pink. Yeah. We could add directly on here if you wanted to. That's what's so great is paint pouring and pouring media makes it so forgiving. You can always go back in and add. Also, I was talking about colors. You know, always add white is a great way if you have especially a lot of bright colors or you do want to mix like your cools and warms. White is a great way to um, really help the colors so you see some definition. And then remember, mm -hmm. anytime you add a dark color or like a black or a navy, a little bit goes a long way. So I would go white on your dark and then you can always go back in and add more because it's going to overpower it. Hey, Kira, I have two questions. Um, so do you think you could add tape to the middle to keep your two pores separated? You can. You could absolutely just use like a stencil tape or painter's tape. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually done that. Here's a funny, I have an example. So this is just with painter's tape. We poured and then pulled the painter's tape up. It was actually stencil tape. And you can see you can get a really clean line. Yeah. So you can absolutely, I like because of the beach and we're going to use a straw and blow our paint, move it around. I kind of like that organic um, feeling. And then um, also, how do you decide when you're doing your pours, how do you decide whether you want to do a dirty pour or a straight pour? So um, let me show you an example, see if we have one here. So this is probably, I'm going to pull this right off the wall, guys. So, <laughs> so like a direct pour, you're going to get more definition in your lines. So you can see the coral, the pink and the white, you're going to have more control and you're going to get, it's going to be less blended, even though it's not truly all blending together. And then if you do a dirty pour, your colors are going to be more mixed and more muted, but you're still going to get definition. It's just going to be less graphic and less contrast. Okay, cool. So that's Thank you. Really that's a great video. example. Yeah, those are two awesome examples of that. And this is a dirty pour. So it's kind of just preference. Mm-hmm. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so you guys see I have got my pink sky. And also when you tilt, you don't need to worry about the edges of your canvas because when you tilt it, it's gonna go ahead and cover the edges of your canvas. So you don't need to worry about a paintbrush or touching them up. And you just wanna keep moving and you know, it's until you're kind of satisfied. I wanna go down a little bit more on here. So sorry if you can't see this. I'm going to get some more pink on my canvas. Okay. So there's that. Now we're going to do a second dirty pour. I'm just going to take another cup and I'm going to mix my yellow and my orange together. It's a pretty color. I love that yellow. Yeah. So I'm going to just give this a stir. Michelle said, I love your teaching style. Clear and, and so happy. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so happy to be teaching with Michaels. Like, thank you guys for having us. It's been really yeah. fun. Uh, Maria said she's pouring along with you and she's getting bubbles. What should she do? Don't worry. The bubbles are going to go away when it dries. So that's mm -hmm. a great question. A lot of people ask that. Um, it's just from stirring your pouring medium. So don't worry about those. I've never had bubbles show after it dries. So those will go away. You don't need to go through and pop them. Just let them dry and they will disappear. Okay, so I have my orange and yellow, and I'm actually going to add a little bit of this parchment into my orange and yellow here, just in my dirty pour. It's looking pretty bright. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and I'm going to pour, so this is the sunset piece. So I'm going to pour, again, directly on here. Ooh. So this one orange is really so the other one was more yellow this is like really really orange the way it's coming out I love which is fine again everyone is going to be different it's like a later sunset yeah, <laughs> the sun's yeah. almost down <laughs> so again you're just going to swirl this and so you're just using orange and yellow right now is that right orange and yellow i added a little bit of the parchment into it mm -hmm. oh, okay so parchment okay. like that tan color yep kind of that really creamy color okay you can see it and then I am just, I know this looks like nothing. You're like, what? So I'm actually going to take a straw. This is just a drinking straw. 
and I am going to blow the paint. So I'm going to get down. You want to kind of be parallel with your surface because you don't want to blow down into it because your paint's going to splatter. But you want to get down. And you just want to blow. And I'm gonna get rid of those lines. And then I'm gonna turn it. I really wanna get some of that pink into the yellow and orange. That's looking so good, Kira. Those are blending so beautifully. And there's no right or wrong. If you get some splatter, you know, we're still gonna add our water. So Anne's asking, she says one of the paints she has is multi-surface. Will that still work? Absolutely, multi-surface is great. It's not gonna make a difference and you still do the one-to-one -one ratio. And you okay. know, we really recommend, I'm getting strong, making a mess here. We really recommend multi-surface if you're doing something other than a canvas, if it's like a ceramic or you're gonna use it outdoors, multi-surface is great. I love the straw technique. Um, it looks abstract. Um, Gabby's asking, how long will it take to dry? We recommend 24 hours, Gabby. Just let it dry. Just let, let it be. Put it somewhere where you're not going to bother it and just let it really cure. And the great thing about the blowing, you can actually like get rid of, you're like, oh, I don't like that. Or you want to add some more of your pink and your parchment. You can just go ahead. And again, you know, ours is more subtle on our example. I like the really bright colors when we are, um, when we are showing it on camera, because you really see it. Then you can even go back through and really move this around. And you know, you could even add some more if you're like, mm, it's really reading orange. It's a little bit different than what I want. You can just go back and add more of that pink and white. And that's what's so great. You can't, you know, it's just the movement that the folk art uh, pouring medium creates. You can't mess this up. You know, if you want it to be more blended, you can let some of that paint run off even. Just create that beautiful sunset. That looks so beautiful. It looks just like a sunset. So I'm gonna let some of those lines run off and it's so forgiving. That's what's so fun and relaxing. And again, anybody can do this. This is a great thing. Kids are home right now, especially for summer. You can get them involved. This is a great teen and tween project for them to do. Um, they can create like big pieces of art for, you know, they love to personalize. So this is a great thing that they can do. So I'm happy with that now. So again, we get messy guys. It just is what it is. There is paint all over this place. So you everybody's saying so relaxing. This is so much fun. Wow, looking so good. Um, good. Sherry wants to know, can she pour on wood? Absolutely. You can pour on canvas, wood, terracotta, paper mache, tile, ceramic, rocks. Um, basically, you can pour on anything, especially if you change up your um, formula that you're using. So again, multi-surface is great. Outdoor is great, enamel is great, any of our specialty. Like you can mix any of that with our folk art pouring medium. And that's why I love this. Like the premix is great, especially maybe if you're just getting started or with the kids and you want, you know, you don't want to, you're not ready to experiment yet and go out there. But the pouring medium is such a great thing to have. And a little bit goes a long way. So this is a 16 ounce bottle and you get a ton of pours because it's just a one to one ratio. Um, also something you can do is that if you're going to go ahead and use this, um, say within the next 24 hours, you can actually, if you mix too much or you want to go back to it, if you just take some like press and seal or saran wrap, something that's airtight, even a mason jar, you want to save it, you can save this, give it a good stir. If it's getting a little thick, add a little bit more pouring medium and you can go ahead and go back and use it. So, um, awesome. yeah, so you're not wasting it again, which is a great thing. So Kira, Layla has asked me to relay a message to you. She said, can you tell Miss Valentine that I love her DIY skills? I wish I could be there with her. <laughs> oh, I love that. I wish you me. Now we have to Zoom. I know. And everybody's at home, Kira. I can see them all pouring. They've got their straws. They've got their canvases. They're all doing the same technique. We've got families sitting at tables. We've got tons of people pouring along. 
I love that. I, I know it's hard to like hold up. Like Jesse, I love your class on Monday because you can hold up when you're done pouring. Right. You're like, <laughs> Don't hold up your pouring. <laughs> yep. Okay, so now I'm going to take my navy and I'm going to take my light blue and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take another cup. I'm going to, I'm going to do light first. And also remember as you layer that the first color you put in your cup is what's going to kind of be on top once you pour it. So just think about that when you're doing it. So if you want really that light on top when you pour, you want to put your light on the bottom. So um, Kira, Shani is asking, if you have a Cricut at home, once your pour is dry, can you add vinyl on top of it? Yes, absolutely. So like to personalize it, so you could let this dry, then you could cut out words like relax or beach or a name or a date. You could absolutely put this right over it. Um, and something fun I can show you guys when I'm done with this pour is um, how to make a paint skin. I have an example. So again, all this leftover paint, which is another way you can personalize these. And it is mm -hmm. kind of like you're making like a paint vinyl, you're making paint paper almost. That's cool. Michelle said it's so nice to be part of this community, even if only for an hour. And it's fun to get away from um, all her worries for a little bit. I love that. And that is so important. Um, and we are so happy to be doing this. That's one thing that we've been talking about, you know, the past couple months, that um, it is so important to take time for yourself, relax, you know, it's a stress reliever. It's a great way to bond. Um, you know, even if you're taking this class, you can't see your friends right now, like take the class with them. That's a great way to do it. And, you know, share, you know, what you're doing, what you're creating, a great thing to do with your kids. So I love that. And thanks for letting us be here and do this with you guys. Um, Kira, do you have any suggestions of how you could attach vinyl to the top of your pour when it's dry? Yes. So I would use Mod Podge. Mm -hmm. So I would use Mod Podge. You could use matte or gloss. And you can use it since it's a glue and sealer all in one and it dries clear. I would, once this is dry, Mod Podge, put your vinyl down or your paper, even scrapbook paper, and then you could Mod Podge right over it and it'll be right on your canvas stuck there. Thank you, that's awesome. Um, how can we seal it when it's dry? Seal it? Yeah. Oh, okay, so if you were just pouring on a canvas or something that's decorative, like behind us, there's no need to seal it. Um, but if you want to seal, it's going to be like heavy use or outdoor. So I would recommend, again, Mod Podge. You could use any of our formulas. We make an outdoor, a dishwasher safe, gloss, matte, satin. We also make this really great clear acrylic spray. So this is an aerosol, unlike our other Mod Podge. But you could just hit it and let it dry and it's going to protect it. So this is great for something like coasters. We did this in one of our first classes. Um, this is great for outdoor rocks. So this is a great little thing just to have, hit your canvas and be done. Um, but if it's not gonna be something that's used a lot, it's just decorative, there's no reason to seal it. You just let it dry. And um, you can see that it's not sticky. It doesn't crack or peel. Like This is just completely dry and smooth. But if, awesome. and also if you did the one shine, so this is more matte because of the paint, you could hit it with a gloss to make it more shiny if you wanted that look. Mm. People are, I'm wondering if they can write words on theirs, like make a sign with their pouring afterwards. Yeah, that's absolutely. a great idea. Yeah, you could stencil on it even. You could mm -hmm. take a stencil um, and like stencil right over it so you could, you know, beach or love or, you know. Yeah, I love that idea. You know, relax. You could absolutely do that right on here. Awesome. Huh. Okay. So I'm just mixing my navy, my light blue, and white. I just want to make sure I have enough paint in here for you guys. And again, we're just doing a dirty pour, and that means we are layering all our paint in one cup. Okay, so now we're going to pour it. I'm going to go right over all this like orange mess we have. I'm just going to pour right on here. And even, and we're gonna blow this with a shirt also. And it's, you know, there's a lot of paint on here. So. Yeah. Somebody asked earlier, Kira, um, what if you have too much paint? Is there such thing if you've poured too much onto your canvas? Yeah, if you pour too much, then you just wanna tilt it and swirl it and let it run off. Okay. Yep, so it's just gonna run off. And again, if you don't have enough, you could just go back in and add more. 
how long does it stay wet? Like while you're swirling it, how long before it sort of starts to dry? Okay, well, it takes a good 24 hours for this to dry. So you're gonna be able to manipulate it and move it around for a couple hours after. Okay, cool, thank you. Just like any acrylic paint, like the medium's not, it's thinning it down. So it's gonna extend the dry time a little bit so you can get around and move. Awesome. Again, a little bit more in there. Grit48 said it's coming out so great. Oh, good. And also Jan said, it's impressive how little paint you have on your fingers. <laughs> oh, I've been white. Oh, and you guys might <laughs> also mention this every class, like manicures are not <laughs> right now either, so. Yep, manicures are canceled, we've been saying. This is the new, like, trend, pouring nails. I think we should start yep. that. <laughs> okay, um, can so you add glitter to the paint before you start, Kira? Sorry. Yeah, no, please ask questions. You absolutely can add glitter to the paint, but because it's gonna mix, it's not gonna be shiny. So if you wanna add glitter, I recommend adding it after you pour. So you can add the glitter, and we did this last week. You can take your glitter and sprinkle it on when your paint is wet, and then it's gonna be shiny. Um, or once it's dry, you could actually take Mod Podge and you can add glitter back onto it. Um, yeah. Something else is great is our Folk Art Glitterific. And I don't think I actually have a bottle with me right now. But we make an amazing folk art glitterific paint and it's a really thick, um, it is the most glittery glitter paint um, that is out there and it makes a great addition. And I think someone's grabbing me a bottle I can show you. And it's a great alternative to glitter because it is no mess. So this stuff comes out of the bottle. It's glitter particles in a clear base and it makes a great addition. You can see um, this is actually uh, an example here. So this is glitter. Oh, yeah. So actually we just added this. That looks really sparkly. We were done. Awesome. So glitter at this, but I would, I would actually not, you know, now that I'm thinking, I would wait and add your glitter at the end to keep the shine. Okay. Okay. That's really crooked now, guys. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take another straw, this everyday drinking straw, and I'm going to start blowing my water to create waves and texture. Okay. And I'm actually going to add, like, I like the example. I'm going to add a little bit of dark in here. I'm going to add it right over that. And just like to create some depth and shadow in my water. And then add a navy. That's looking so good here. It looks just like waves. I love that. And the more layers you basically blow with your straw, the more you're gonna get. Yeah, it looks so good. I'm just gonna um, answer a couple questions here while you're, while you're using the straw, Kira. Someone said, can you put letters on top when you're done? Yeah, Kira said you can absolutely put um, letters on top. You can use a stencil or hand paint them when it, once it's dry. Absolutely. Um, and so I have, um, so again, my hands are really messy, guys. Um, so this is folk art glitter. Like, this is actually clear. I have like this little bag of goodies down here. It's so funny, guys, with all these paints. So Kira, after you're done with the pour, if you wanted to add like white caps to um, the painting, how could you do that? Absolutely. So I would actually just take. Uh, my leftover white pouring medium and you can even take a spoon like sometimes if you pour you don't have a lot of control so I would take my spoon of my white and I would just add it I would just add a little bit of detail in here Beatrice said my sister is doing it with me and then in parentheses she said my assistant <laughs> I, I have some of those two in the room right now. They come and get the wet. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, I just added some white. That looks so good. And again, you, so you can, is that, like, those are little white caps. And again, yeah. if you have too much white, you could just go back in with your dirty, dirty pour or your navy, and you could just, you know, cover those up. I love that. I also want to give a shout out. We've got Annika watching who is five years old and they're pouring along at home. Hey, Annika. 
I'm so glad everybody's pouring with us today. That's so yeah. awesome. We've got all the people pouring. We have their straws. They're, everybody's in groups. Looks like they're pouring with family and friends. We've got kids and parents. Lots yeah, of I'm people just mess. joining along for inspiration, it looks like. What a mess. But yeah, I mean, that's so you can see like how different and it just, it's just the two different, same technique, but this two different pours that you can get and looks that you can get. Um, so I this love is, that. Yeah, so this is Glitterific. I just want to show you guys. So Folk Art Glitterific and show you guys how it comes out of the bottle. Got a seal on it. Anne said, can you attach shells when you're done? Absolutely. So I would let your um, painting dry and you could attach, um, I actually have some sand here that I was going to put in the next one. We have just some sand or um, these are some great like crushed up seashells or whole seashells. And again, I would just use Mod Podge since it's a glue and sealer all in one and you can attach them right to your canvas to embellish it when you're done. Okay, awesome, thank you. So this is our Glitterific, I don't know if you guys can see that. Like that's how thick it is coming out of the bottle. Like it's standing up on its own. It's wow. Um, so you could go ahead and once this is dry, you could just scoop this out with a palette knife, a silicone brush or just a regular paintbrush and you could add it to your canvas. So I'll actually, I'm gonna scoop this guy. And you said to add the glitter at the end after it dries. That's what you recommend. Yes, right? add the glitter at the end. Because if you mix it with your paint, sorry, someone did ask that. I don't know if I answered it correctly. No, you did. We just have to keep getting it a lot. Here because it's just gonna get mixed in with the paint and it's not gonna be shiny. So, but the great thing about this glitterific is once it dries, it's no mess, which is so amazing. So I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna use a popsicle stick because that's what I have right here. But so this is um, the glitterific. So you could just take it and you could just add it right to your canvas. And this is great. We did some geo pours. This is really great. You could see it over the light and dark. I'm just adding it here, but you could just accent your waves. You could even do like a gold for the sunset, like kind of like on the tip of where the um, sun and the water meets. That would be really pretty with like a gold or iridescent. You can see, and you can put this on in layers. I love that. Because that. that's what I had here, but um, a silicone brush works great. A regular brush. Yeah, and you can add any color of glitter you want, right? All different kinds. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, and then when this dries, the glitter, it's no mess. It seals it all in. Or you could use loose glitter with some Mod Podge would work also. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, okay, well, I'm gonna um, get some more supplies. If anybody has any questions where I grab stuff, this is the beauty yeah. a lot you to watch me switch out. Totally, like, so somebody's asking, um, if you rec you uh, mentioned adding sand, like if you're doing a beach scene, how would you add the sand? What would you do to do that? Yep, so I would use Mod Podge. And so here, I'll grab this guy that I already have. Let me just hold this. So I'm just going to use this as an example. So um, I just have some Mod Podge down here. Again, I have like this goodie bag of supplies just in case we need it. Yeah. <laughs> Always be prepared. Yeah, I have a brush. I wish I had a five-year-old assistant, like somebody did or assistant. <laughs> one of our, uh, one of our uh, content creators, Emma, offered to sit under the table and hand Kira paint if she needed it, but Kira said she didn't have to do that. <laughs> I kind of want to do it too, just for fun. <laughs> um, so this is just Mod Podge gloss. You could use matte gloss satin. And since it's a glue-in sealer, you could just add this and it's going to dry clear. Remember, it's going to come out of the bottle milky but it's gonna dry completely clear. So say I wanted just a little bit of beach and I'm just covering up my ocean now for you guys to see. Don't, I wouldn't recommend doing it like this. Yeah. Um, but you could just take your sand and sprinkle it right on there. Awesome. Yeah, and you could just layer it. Again, you could use seashells. This is really great too. You know, a lot of people may not get to the beach this summer. So if you've, you know, saved some sand and seashells from past, um, trips this is a great way to use those like right like we just have this jar at home it's seashells and sand dollars that we've collected over the years like this is a great way to actually do something with that now and a great way just to remember your times and you know bring a little bit of beach home with you right now yeah so we've got a couple uh, questions yeah um a couple of people want to know if you wanted to do a paint pour on a mug what, how would you recommend doing that mm -hmm. 
So you can paint pour on a mug, but um, remember it's going to drip off. So unless you have a device or something that's spinning it or turning it, or you just want to do one side, let it dry and then flip it. Um, it's going to be kind of hard because it is a 3D round object, but I can show you a little um, fun tip or trick that we do when we want to do um, curved around objects. That was the next question. Someone said they have extra paint at home. It's running off. What do they do with all that extra paint? Oh, I love it. It's like you guys set me up for this. <laughs> um, well, now that you've asked, so we create paint skins. So again, this is just an inexpensive baking tray. This is great for silicone mat or parchment paper. So once all your paint runs off, then you can actually, once it dries, you can peel it up. And you're Vivian actually- said, paint skins, all caps. She's excited. <laughs> this isn't a super thick one, but you can actually see it creates paint paper. So this is just, again, a pour that we did. You could cut it. You can use an X-Acto knife. You can stencil. This is how you cr create your letters or your words. Like this is just like a great way. You could also actually, instead of just using your runoff, so say you had this left or you want to mix up a batch, you could actually go ahead and pour into your pan and just let it dry. And then you're creating exactly what you want. So you can create an entire sheet of it. And then what you do is you wrap on a round surface. So say you have, um, again, round. So if you're doing a mug, this is just a you know concrete pot here or a terracotta pot if you had. And you can actually just cut this. And you so I just want to refresh people. So what Kira has right now is paint from another day when she's poured, she let it drip onto the pan and it dried and then she peeled it up. So that's what this is. So you would trim this, of course, I'm doing this. That looks great, Kira, it looks awesome. Yeah, so you could trim this, measure it out. And then what you do is you just use Mod Podge. So you would just use Mod Podge as a glue and sealer. And then that's gonna be right on there. And that's a great way to do a round surface. Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah. Um, Levi B wants to know, do you need a special paint for fabric and will it work with the pouring medium? So, um, I don't, Jesse, have we done pouring uh, with our fabric creations? You know what? I'm not sure about the fabric creations. I know I have done it with our leather studio paint on leather. Um, mm -hmm. have we done it with fabric creations? I feel like it would work. I do. Yeah. So our fabric creations is our fabric paint. It's super soft, um, but we can definitely um, ask and get back to you on that because I just don't know like washing if it would change. Right. Um, you know, if it was decorative only, but if it would um, change when you put it in a washing machine. If it's decorative only for doing like a pillow or just like mm -hmm. a lampshade, maybe even, I don't know, you can t use our multi-surface too because that also works on fabric. It's just not as soft as the fabric creations. Like if you wanted to make something that you're wearing. Correct. <laughs> So I'm going to move. Someone wants to know, how do you do it on a dresser? Oh, okay. So we actually poured a dresser. And again, we have a ton <laughs> of project inspiration on fatonline.com. So furniture, some more um, techniques on round surfaces and the paint skins. Um, but a dresser, so we did it when we, we wanted one continuous pour over. So it was a like long, tall dresser. So I actually took the dresser drawers out, laid them together and just did one giant pour, separated them while they dried. So then when you looked at the dresser, it just looked like one big swirl. Another way you could do it is you could pour each dresser individually. So still take them out, lay them so they're flat, pour, let it dry. That's basically it. I would tape off anything that you don't want paint on. So again, this is gonna be messy and it's kind of hard to control once you get into it. So I would use um, painter's tape and plastic and really tape off any area that you don't want that paint. Because once it's on there, it's not gonna come off your furniture. That's great advice. Thanks, Kira. Yeah. Everyone's saying this was great. They're sending hearts. They said super cool trick. Um, so Ona Lee said, oh, let me show up to her. She just said, basically she's having so much fun. She's been watching all of our pores. Um, let me see. Everybody's commenting so much, I can't even keep up. I know. I, got, I, mean, I was going to get to three, but I didn't just going to get to do two, but we're going to get to the hair dryer, so that's really fun. Okay, cool. She said, I love your pouring. Thank you so much. I love plaid, and I love to paint and pour, so these classes have been perfect for me. Thank you all so much for bringing my summer back to life. Oh, I love that. Thank you, guys, for such the, all the kind words. Yeah. Be here, and we hope everyone's getting inspired and relaxing. Mm -hmm. You know, this is 
kind of me time for some people. So even if you aren't pouring along with us, like, you know, get inspired, get your supplies. Maybe this weekend you have some time. You can go back and watch all these classes um, on michaels.com. We have a pouring one on 101. We've done geo pouring. So um, I think up next, next week, we're going to do a galaxy pour. So that'll be really fun. Ooh. Some metallics, um, and the cause, um, color shift paint, which will be great. Okay, so I just stuck my thumbtacks in the back of my canvas. So I'm ready to go on this guy. I'm going to pull over on my paint. So I need giant cups pre-mixed on these. But again, it's just a one-to-one -one ratio. And I'm just doing, um, we're going to do some water and we're going to move it around like we did with the straw with the hair dryer, but really create like a giant wave with this. So this is really fun to do. And we're going to do a direct pour for this guy. That's all I need. Linda said she can't wait. She's been waiting for the galaxy pour. Oh, good. Well, definitely it's next Wednesday. So join us. So we're going to be using, um, and I think the supplies are listed. So again, the folk art pouring medium, canvas, treasure gold. So it'll be really fun. Something we haven't done. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to pour. I'm just going to do a direct pour for this one. So I am going to, um, I'm going to create like a wave. So I'm going to pour an arch. And this is a really nice long canvas. So I'm going to start with my dark. And so I just have navy again. Again, using tons of blues. And we are pouring. What's that? And we're still using the pouring medium, right? Yes, still using the pouring medium. And I'm just going to pour bands of color. And we're going to go right next to each other. And it's okay if you overlap, no big deal. Okay, cool. Yep. And again, use whatever blue you have. You know, again, if you want to bring more aquas in and you want to make it more like a tropical look, you've got. Cayman blue or Calypso sky. Kira, about what size canvas is that? Oh, geez. <laughs> I'm guessing around 11 by 14. A big rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> Which just tells you it'll work for any size canvas, whatever you've yes. got. <laughs> yep. And again, you just want to make sure you have enough paint to cover your canvas. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go off the edge there, and I'm just going to keep layering. White. Oh, that, looks, that looks really cool already, even before you swirl it. Yep. That pattern looks awesome. And again, this is very similar to the straw. We're just going to do it with a hair dryer. I can't wait to see that hair dryer. I'm so excited. Um, Shani is asking, are the ones you're using, they already have the pouring medium mixed in, right? They do. Again, we already just pre-mixed these to save time. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio and I just mixed big cups. So we had um, enough paint while we were doing this. Okay, we're cool. just doing a direct pour. So we are pouring right onto the canvas. Awesome. Said, wow, awesome. Very cool. And then someone said the canvas is probably 12 by 24. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Things I should know. <laughs> Aditi is asking, what colors are those? Okay, so we have got navy. I wrote them down in case anybody asked. Navy, midnight, <laughs> um, cobalt hue, calypso sky. Um, we've got titanium white and French blue. Awesome. Any blues will work though, probably, right? Absolutely any blues. And I like just a real variety. So you want to have lights, darks, and mediums. Like that's really important. And I'm actually going to really fill in this bottom with white. Megan is saying um, her paints are feeling a little thick, even though she added the medium. What should she do? Yep. So just go ahead and go back in and add some more pouring medium a little bit at a time. And you really want your consistency to be um, like syrup dripping off your spoon or whatever you're mm -hmm. stirring with. So it's, you won't mess it, like won't hurt it. Just go ahead and add more pouring medium. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Someone okay. said, um, can they tape their canvases together and do one overall pour? Yes, 
Yes. So say you buy like a pack, like those little six by sixes, or if you have three by threes, that's a great way to do it. Mm -hmm. You just put them all together and do one four. So then when you hang them on your wall, it looks like one giant four and one big marble. That's a great tip. Awesome. Whitney wants to know, do you prefer the pre-mixed pouring paints or do you like to mix it yourself? So I like to mix it myself. Again, the pre-mixed is great, especially for kids or if you're just getting started and just, you know, want to make it easy. But I mm -hmm. love the pouring medium because you can really personalize it. And you can also add, you know, all our specialty paints. Like I said, the color shift, the treasure gold, the metallics. Like it's just really fun. And it's, again, it's the process and relaxing that you can make your own. It's kind of like cooking, you know, you just kind of make a concoction and um, you can change it up every time. So, and the great thing about the pouring medium is it doesn't change the color of the paint. So if you're doing a painting and you mix that exact pink, it's hard to get that again. But with the pouring medium, say you run out of pink, you can just, you know, make more and it's not gonna change the color. So you're gonna have enough to finish your pour. Cool, thank you. Oh, okay, so I'm just gonna take the hair dryer. We're gonna get loud. So this is just a hair dryer, and then this is the attachment. Like I usually throw this away when I get my hair dryer. <laughs> um, we actually had to buy a new one, so we had this here because we use hair dryers a lot in the studio. So this is the attachment, um, and let's see if we turn this guy on. Okay, so we're gonna um, go low to start, and then we're gonna turn it on high, and just hot air is fine. Um, and we are just gonna blow. I'm actually gonna turn it on high. We don't want to you want it's looking so good Gabrielle said she always throws that plastic piece off she better find it <laughs> I can't hear anybody okay sorry Kira <laughs> no 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 I just want to make sure everybody can hear so I am just um it did a direct pour and now I'm using the hair dryer to create um, the wave. So I'm going to keep going. Okay. And then what you can do is you can flip it around. Oh, we're getting messy, you guys. It looks awesome. If you don't have a hair dryer, what else could you use, Kira? A giant straw. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would recommend I if you're having too much paint around. It's basically the same technique, but you could really um, get some really great movement by using a hair dryer. <laughs> Someone said a boba straw. Oh, she can't hear me. And then again, you could go back and move this and swirl this around. There's a lot of paint on this guy. I would probably not use as much paint if you're doing this at home. I used a lot of paint. Someone said it looks like tie-dye. Yeah, and then you could even go back in. So you could take some of this like parchment. Oh, Oh, you guys, we didn't mix this one. So see, this is what happens. If it's not thick enough, it runs. So this is the beauty of a live Zoom. But that'll dry clear anyway, right, Kira? It's not going to ruin it all, like I said. Okay, cool. You could just go ahead and just even run that off your corner. Yeah, everybody's saying, wow, very abstract, pretty neat, beautiful. It's yep. looking so good. Yep, so what you could do is you could add, you could kind of create. Hmm. You could just do a corner and then let that dry and that could be like really your beach kind of like we did in the other one and you could go ahead and add your sand and shells right on there with your Mod Podge. And then you could even do, do a smaller canvas, you could do more of an arc, you know, um, we've done it and it's just an arc of blue and then you really um, push your hair dryer with your paint out so it's creating like a little beach um, scene there and you can put your shells in sand. Cool. So Kira, how far away from the canvas were you holding the hair dryer? I don't know. I mean, you want to be like a good six inches. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and you, I would start on low. And then just so you get the feel of it. And you can see the ripples that it creates. Okay. And then you don't even need to swirl it. You can see the ripples. And it's almost nice, like, if you let that go, then you can go back in and hit it again. And create waves. So yeah, I did about six inches and then just really got in the more you want to move the paint. And the paint awesome. is spraying everywhere. You can see I have a mess because we've been spraying, but it didn't spray everywhere, which is really <laughs> nice. What setting did you have the hairdryer on? We've got a lot of questions coming in. <laughs> yep, I started on low and then I just went to high. And this is just okay. a regular dryer. And you don't, you want to have this attachment. It really works best because it controls the air and makes it more mm. concentrated. If you just use the regular hair dryer without the attachment to it, um, it's going to bl blow more and you are going to get more of a mess of a splatter. Okay. Awesome. Great teacher. Very nice. This is better than therapy. <laughs> I love that. Michelle wants to know what was it that you put in the left corner again of the canvas? Oh, so I just um, poured some parchment. So you could even, um, kind of like we did the other one, I just poured some parchment right onto here. And it's parchment's the color, right? <laughs> the color. It's okay. mixed with the pouring medium. So you could pour that right on there. We're getting a lot of paint, you guys, on this. Um, let that dry, and then that's where you could go back in. And I would, of course, let this dry, but you could add your sand and your shells, and you could just use Mod Podge and attach it right in there. Again, I just like the little hint of the beach on there. So you could just add some detail. You know, this is just craft sand, but again, like if you've been to the beach last year and you're not able to get this year, this is a great, like, what do you do with all those shells and sand? You know, my son always collects mm -hmm. shells. I'm like, what are we going to do with this, you know, jar of shells? This is Everyone's a saying, Mod Podge, Mod Podge, Mod Podge. <laughs> yeah, so again, I would let this dry. I'm just doing this since we're live. But you could sprinkle your shells and your sand right in there and glue them right on there. Okay. How many shades of blue did you use? I used one, two, three, four, five. I used six shades of blue. Okay. But again, I would say between four and six is the most that you want to use in a floor. Um, you could use less. You could use um, two blues and a white. Um, you could even add a metallic in there. So we've got, you know, the beautiful treasure gold. You could add that into it and really make it glisten and shine. That would be a great addition. Either the silver or the blue would be pretty. Awesome. Yeah. You're such a good teacher. Can't that? wait to try it. Yeah, yeah. I'm so excited to see what everybody made. You can you check out um, our Facebook or Instagram hashtag plaid mm. and see what you guys made. Yeah, I can see everybody's still got their straws. Everybody's got their aprons on. They're looking down. It looks like they're do still doing some paint pouring. I love that. Yeah. Um, so, Jesse, do you want to pick a winner? I would love to pick a winner. Okay. okay. So, I've got the chat up on my phone. I'm going to scroll through. The winner is Vivian Hughes. All right, Vivian Hughes. So you have won $50 worth of plaid product available at Michael's. So what we need you to do is go to our plaid Facebook page and direct message us and we will make sure we get your paint out to you and your supplies. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys all for watching. We had so much fun. I hope you were inspired and you, um, you know, were either pouring with us or you're gonna get your supplies and go ahead and pour later this week or this weekend when you have some you know, me time, downtime, um, inspired by the beach. It's finally summer. If you can't get out, create your own beach. Um, thank you guys so much. We'll be back next week. We're going to be doing a galaxy pour. So we're going to be using a lot of fun metallics in our color shift. So you'll want to check that out and a bunch of different techniques. So um, thanks everybody for watching and joining us. Bye guys. Bye guys.